Hello, I'm Rich Carroll with Jost International. This is the first in a series of videos intended to provide you as a service provider instruction on how to identify, repair, or replace Jost fifth wheels. The focus of this series is the Jost cab actuated air release fifth wheel. What we're about to show you is a cutaway, obviously, of a Jost fifth wheel. And what you need to know is on a Jost air release fifth wheel, it, it really can, can exists of the exact same locking mechanism that Jost uses on our manual release fifth wheel with the addition of an air cylinder that's controlled, thus the term, from the cab. With Jost fifth wheels, you have four main components. The release handle, an operating level, locking bar, and lock jaw. The simplest possible locking mechanism there is in the market. Every Joe's fifth wheel has a cushion ring that takes the impact of the kingpin during the coupling process, thus protecting the top plate from damage. We also have a remote grease zerk that allows you to deliver, deliver grease right through the jaw. The adjustment on a Joe's is controlled by adjustment bolt at the side, which controls the travel of the lock bar. In the case of an air release, there's two things that can happen. It's either not going to open properly or it's not going to close properly. If it's not opening properly or not closing properly, chances are that one of these four components have been damaged or bent. We're going to show you as we go through this series how to identify the problem and make that repair rather than just leaping to the step of replacing a top plate, which may or may not be needed. For the Jost air operated fifth wheel release to work, you must have at least 90 psi of air available. We're going to show you how to disconnect the tractor from the trailer using the Jost air operated fifth wheel release. Right now, our dolly legs are set, our, our air lines and electrical cord are properly stowed to the tender, and now we're ready to unlatch the fifth wheel and pull away from the trailer. To do this, the brakes must be set, the, not, the yellow knob pulled out, and then grasp the valve for the fifth wheel release, pulling it out and holding it for about three seconds. Release it, push in your yellow parking brake button for the tractor, into first gear and easily pull away from the trailer. We're now disconnected. If you have trouble disconnecting from the trailer, the fifth wheel will not release, more than likely, you have some pressure on the kingpin jaw. To release the pressure on it, put it in reverse and lightly back into the trailer, set the brakes and operate the valve again. Hi, I'm Mike Jones with Jost International. I'll be taking you through the series with the air release fifth wheel. If you are having issues coupling, you want to check the, the release handle, make sure it has not been damaged. The damage also might not be limited to the release handle, so you also want to check the air cylinder and the release arm to make sure they have not been damaged. If the handle has been bent, visually inspect the air cylinder. You want to make sure that there hasn't been any related damage from the handle being damaged. Look at the cylinder shaft and make sure it is straight and true. 
after inspecting the air cylinder. Also look at the lever bar and make sure it is, it is true and it hasn't had related damage from the impact with the handle. The last aspect you want to look at the fifth wheel if you're having coupling issues and it's highly unlikely, but look at the jaw of the fifth wheel and see how it operates. The way you'll do this to, to determine if there's any damage to the, the jaw is you want to close the fifth wheel, come underneath and release the springs. Once you do that, put the fifth wheel in the open position and make sure the jaws rotate freely. If the jaws rotate freely, everything is, is fine. If you complete a visual inspection and see no apparent damage in the fifth wheel that's difficult to open or shows slack in the locking mechanism, it is likely the wheel needs adjustment. In this case, refer to Joe's video addressing adjustment procedures, which can be found on the Joe's website at joestinternational.com. To address the adjustment procedures on the Joe's Tone page, click Videos. This will take you to the video library with many helpful resources. Click on Joe's Fifth Wheel Adjustment Procedures. To replace the release handle, the first thing you want to do is come up underneath to the air cylinder. The way this operates is to push in the part and pull out on the air hose. We want to release the double coil springs. Put the J-hook through both springs and release them. We're removing the release handle. There is a quick release wedge pin on the release handle end of the air cylinder. What you want to do is push the wedge in and feed that pin up and through. As you can see by this cutaway model, is there is a bolt, castle nut, and a carter pin that is used to attach it to the release arm. What you want to do is take the pin out, loosen the castle nut. Once you've loosened the castle nut, you can pull the bolt out from the top which frees up the release handle to be removed. The next step to re replace the release handle is to remove the spring from the retractable handle. Once the bolt has been removed from the release arm, you want to extend the handle out and start feeding it through the slotted side of the casting. This is the procedure to replace a damaged operating lever. You'll remove the dual coil springs. Once you do that, you want to take the castle nuts, remove them. They have the quarter pins in them. Remove that. And this is just a loose fit when it comes off, so you should be able to hand loosen these. This is the, the nut and the bolt for the release arm. Once you get through with it, remove the other pin. You've got another bolt and nut, castle nut, with a washer. After those are removed, it's as easy as pulling the release arm out. Come back in with a new one and just reverse the procedure. Start on your, your slide bar bolt. Get everything lined up. Come through the bottom, you'll replace your washer and the castle nut. Very important to remember, both the castle nuts are all, only to design to go tight enough for the pin to return through. They are not supposed to be tightened. Hold both the bolts. S 
Same holds true for the bolt and nut on the release arm, just tight enough for the quarter pin to go through. Once you do that, reattach your dual coil springs. How to tell when a Joe's fifth wheel needs to be rebuilt and with the official Joe's documentation, what you're looking for is 0.69 or less from the, the bottom of the jaw or on the cushion ring. If you take this cushion ring out on the back side, 0.69 or less, this needs to be re, the fifth wheel needs to be rebuilt. Very simple rebuild on the fifth wheel. A couple of visual aids or that, that'll make it quicker just if you don't have a micrometer to take a look at it. First thing you'll notice Jost is embedded into the, the cushion ring. If you clean that off with a putty knife or some other form of a tool, hit it with some brake clean. If it's at the bottom of that O and S, it needs to be replaced. Also, another quick visual is underneath. This bolt is butted up against the slide bar. If that slide bar is not coming in contact with that bolt, then it is time to rebuild the fifth wheel. If you determine that a minor rebuild is required, please refer to the Joe's website. Click videos. If through the end of this effort you still find yourself needing help, please contact Joe's. We're here to help you. We have seven regional salesmen who travel with parts and know how to help you. Following my conclusion will be a map of the Joe's regional salespeople as well as Joe's inside Salesforce. Thank you very much. Please use this map as a source to locate your Joe's regional representative or call 800 253 5105 for Joe's customer service. Finally, during normal business hours, the Jost International website offers a live chat feature for your convenience.